Hello and welcome to this video on Module 2, Creating Content in Brightspace. In this video, we will learn about the options you have to create engaging, dynamic, and beautiful content for your students uh, and for your courses. We're going to start at the course landing page. So at the moment, you're looking at an empty course, and this is the landing page for my course. So you'll see the banner, which I was uh, I was able to customize with the text that I that I want to show my students. You can customize it further by clicking on the three dots. You can change the image. You can select an image from the ones that are available here, or you can also upload an image from your computer. So you can create your own banner. Or you also have the option to customize the banner text. In this case, I, I selected the course name, but you can select custom and you can write your own a title for your course, or you can choose to leave it empty so that it only the banner shows. So the first thing that I'd like to show you in the course landing page is a widget called the Content Navigator widget. At the moment, this Content Navigator widget is empty because there is no content in this course. But as I start creating content and modules in my course, they will be listed here. And when a student or a faculty click on any of those modules, it will show what's inside of those modules. So maybe there's another level of folders within the modules, and then there's items such as PowerPoint presentations or Word documents or links that students can click on, and they will be directed specifically to that page. So it's a great place to get started. This is where students can see a snapshot of the content that it's available to them. And we, we will go back to this content navigator widget as soon as we start adding content to our course. But the place where you will see your content in full extent, where you'll see all the functionality and where students can also navigate the content is the content area over here on the navigation bar. So the first item on the navigation bar, it's content. So let's click here and take a look at what we see here. On the left hand side, we have a number of tools. The first one is a search bar, which is a fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, option for students and for faculty to look for a, a specific content page. So they can use a keyword, a term or a concept, and the system will show every page that has that word in it. So very helpful tool. Then we have the overview and the overview is a place where you can add a welcome message a short course description or, or an overview of your course. You also have the option to add an attachment. If you choose to leave the overview page empty, then when students access the content, they will skip over this page. Nothing will show here. But if you choose to use the overview page, this is the first thing that students will see. So how to edit the overview page, you will click. So when you move your cursor, you'll notice that this will become the background will become a little darker and by clicking on it, it will open the text editor with all of these great tools here, which we will take a closer look at very soon. But just as an example, um, we will just write a, a short message here. So I have uh, included the name of my course my name, and I also told my students where to get started, and I can highlight it, and I can pull this text. So this is my overview page. Uh, you can update it if you're satisfied with the way it looks. You also have many more options to add images, links, and other items here. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And you'll notice that over here, there's an option to add an attachment. So I can... um. I can drag a file uh, and I can upload a file here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to look for a file in my computer and I'm going to upload it as an example. So I have added a file. It's um, a course outline and it displays right here. So this can be a good place to put your outline. I'll show you other options as well. You'll notice that there's a button to download the file or to print the file. So every file that you upload to Brightspace, your students will be able to see it in line. They don't have to leave Brightspace to look at a document, but they can also download a copy to their local computer or they can print it if they need to. And if you made a uh, change your mind and you actually want to remove this, you can click on the Chevron next to overview and you can choose to change the attachment or you can also choose to remove the attachment. So in the overview uh, page, you can only have one file because it's meant to be a quick place for students to get started with their content. 
And I'll show you later um, how to add more files, of course. So that is the overview. Then we have bookmarks. And again, there are currently no bookmarks because we don't have any content yet, but we'll go back here. Uh, so this is um, uh, an excellent place for students to save the most important documents or pages in their content. So maybe there's a list with all of the assessments or maybe there's a summary document at the end of each module. Students can bookmark these pages and they will be listed here so that they can easily access them when they need them. And then we have the course schedule and the course schedule will automatically get populated as you start adding items on your course with dates. So if you added a test that has a date, it will appear in the course schedule and you'll see an area for what's happening today, tomorrow, and in the next seven days. If your content has uh, dates as well, so this will also be appearing here. And you can also see the full schedule and the full schedule will show you what's happening uh, what happened already in the course and what's going to happen in the future. So these are probably items that I created in advance. Uh, so there's a discussion that happened in May. There's a link here. Uh, there's something that happened in September. This is a, an, an assignment. So it's also good for students to be able to go back and see when things were due and look uh, for maybe a, an assignment that they submitted or a discussion that they participated in. So it's um, the tool is designed in a way that helps students go back and find the materials that they need. Uh, I really like these features. So the next thing we'll see here is the table of contents. If I click on table of contents, it's going to show me my content in the center of my screen. Again, there's nothing here yet, but we will start adding things very soon. And then there's also this box over here that says add a module. Module is the name of the tool in Brightspace uh, where you can uh, that you will use to organize your content. So module is essentially a folder and you can call your 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 modules in, in whichever way you prefer. So maybe you have it week one, week two, week three, week four, or maybe unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four with the title of the unit. So it's up to you to, to name your modules according to your needs. Uh, what, what I'm going to do first is actually upload the Brightspace template that GBC created. Uh, you don't have to use it um, um, if you don't want to. It's an option for you. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll give you a couple of different options as well. Maybe your program has its own template that you can incorporate. So you have lots of options. So here it is. Uh, I'm on the Brightspace um, FAQ section of the Teaching and Learning Exchange website. And here there's an option to download the Brightspace template and also instructions. So I'm going to download over here by clicking on course template file, click to download. And then I'm going to click here and it's going to download a zip file to my computer. It's right here. So now I'm going to go back to my course. I'm going to go to course admin tools, import export course package. I'm going to scroll to the bottom to import components and then I'll click on start and it will prompt me to upload a file from my computer. So I'm gonna go here to uploads and I will select the Brightspace template. So you'll see once you upload a folder, it appears here and you have the option to import all components or advanced options. Right now we're gonna use import all components and it should take a minute or so and our content will be uploaded. So the course template will help you uh, organize your content um, it provides uh, a, a starting point, but you can always um, make changes to that template, of course. Okay, so I'm going to click on view content and let's see what this looks like now. Okay, so now my table of contents is populated with modules. So here you'll see an option. Uh, the first module is called essential information. Start here. That's the one I was referring to in my overview page. Then we have the learning materials and then we have an assessments folder. So you'll also notice there's a number 11 here and then there's a number five, five and one. This actually refers to the number of items on each folder. So in total, there are 11 items in Brightspace, in, in my Brightspace content area. There are five on my first module, five on my second, and then one over here. And right now we're looking at the table of contents uh, also on the right-hand side of my screen. 
And you'll notice that you can expand all the folders or you can collapse all the folders. So these, uh, when you see them like this, um, uh, with these rectangle around it, that is called, that is a module. So you'll see it here and you'll see it here as well. And by clicking on this little triangle, it expands and it shows what's inside. So there is a hidden note for professor. So this is actually something that was added uh, to the template with instructions for you. Um, it's hidden and you can delete it once you're done with it. Um, I'll show you that next. There's a, a page to add your professor bio. There's a page where you can add your course outline and section information, information about how the course works, and then getting support. So you will be modifying all of these items here and then make them visible once you're ready to show your students. And then the getting support page is actually a generic page with information for students on how to get help. So that is the uh, essential information module. So let's go back to the table of contents. Uh, I'm gonna collapse this one here and then go next to learning materials. So inside learning materials, so we have our module and then we have sub modules. These are week one, week two, week three, week four. Uh, so you can modify the titles of these weeks to go according with your topics and or, or, or units in your course. These are sub modules because they're inside uh, the main module. So one module and then a sub module. And uh, the system has been populated with 15 weeks for you. So if this is how you organize your content, then this, this will be very helpful for you. And then there's another hitting note for professor here. I'm going to collapse this module as well and then open the assessments module. There is a note here for instructors that can be deleted. Um, and then you have a page with all assessments and weekly topics list. So it's very helpful for students to see one document that has a summary of all the assessments in their course, when they're happening, how much they're worth. So this is a, a sample page for you to populate with your information. And we're gonna take a look at all of these items in, in more detail soon. So let's say you want to add more folders. You can by clicking on add a module here. So let's say that you want something called additional resources. So you write the name over here on the right hand side, on the left hand side. And once you're ready with your title, you click on enter and it has created a new module for you, which is currently empty. So now we have four modules. And if we go back to our landing page for the course, now you'll see that the content navigator widget has now items in it. When I move my cursor over each one of these items, it gets the background gets darker. And you also see these circles that indicate a percentage. So this percentage is actually an indication for you. What you see is an indication of what, what percentage of the content you have reviewed. So in this case, I have reviewed 20% of, of my content. It's also very helpful for students because they see this and they and they they realize they have to go back to this folder because there's something that they have not reviewed. Um, and I haven't reviewed any of these, so it says 0%. If I click on any of these folders or modules, it will show what's inside. So getting support has a check mark. That's actually what I reviewed. But if I click on hidden note for professor, it will take me to that page where I can read it. If I need to go back to the previous level, then I can use the breadcrumbs here to go back to essential information. You can open the next item, which is a page that you can customize with your professor bio. And if I go back to my course landing page, now my essential information page is at a 60%. So it's an indication mainly for students to see the progress in their content. It also shows you the last page you viewed. So it's the professor bio. So if you need to go back to exactly where you were, this is helpful for students if they were looking at some content, but they had to stop. When they return to their computers, they can go exactly to the place where they left off. So here it is. 
So two places to get your content. You can do it directly from the content menu on the navigation bar, which uh, shows you everything that's available. Or you can uh, uh, go directly from the content navigator widget, open the specific folder you need to go to, and then get there. Uh, for example, uh, at the moment, I'm at I'm on week two topic, which is empty, so there's nothing to display. But I also see breadcrumbs here. I can go back to essential information and maybe go to the course outline and section information area. So this is how um, you navigate your content. Um, now that we have content here, I'm gonna open the essential information area. And let's say that student, the student wants to bookmark the getting support page. Over here, what do you see and what do students see? You see the breadcrumbs that allow you to go back to a previous level or folder. You have an option to listen to the text. So there are many accessibility tools available in Brightspace for users that use assistive technology, there are many options. Uh, over here, we have the option to bookmark it. We can expand and view content in a larger window if needed. There's also arrows that take you from one page to the other. So if I click here, it will take me to the next module because that was the last item on the, on the previous folder. Let's try it one more time. But I can also go back to the previous page on this module, which is how the course works. The next thing, uh, it's an option to edit the HTML, which I'll show you very soon. These are called files in Brightspace. It's actually a document created within the system. Uh, and you can edit by clicking on Edit HTML. You can also edit by clicking on the chevron next to the title. You can edit the title, of course, but you can also edit HTML. You can hide frame users, and there's a lot, uh, a few other options here when you click on the chevron. So every time you're looking for something and you don't know exactly where to go, click on the chevron, and that will give you a few options to choose from. Again, the option to download, to print, or to open with a doc reader. And here at the bottom, uh, you can toggle from visible to hidden. So maybe you're not ready for, to show this content to your students. You can keep it hidden. And there's also an option here called required automatic. So as you as I showed you in the content navigator widget, it will show you those percentages of completion. Um, and while students, every time a student opens a page, it will be marked as completed. But there's also an option to make it a manual process. So let's say you have items on your folder and you want to make sure that students go through each one of those items. You can make it required manual and students need to actually click on a little checkbox to confirm that they have reviewed an activity or content. And there's also an option to not make it required. And, and all of this information will be available to you. So you will have access uh, to an area called, uh, over here, class progress, that will show you uh, the content that your student has completed. So uh, in this case, it's only me because it's a sandbox, but if I expand it, it will show me what percentage of the first folder I have reviewed and even uh, when I visited and for how long uh, I was at that page. So it will give you some good insights on how your students are doing and whether they're reviewing the materials or not so that you can give them some encouragement or connect with them when needed. So that's the, um, that is the manual, uh, the, the required automatic required manual. You will still have access to that uh, great report of information about each one of your students. But if you actually want your students to mark it manually, then you can change it here. You can also add dates and restrictions. So uh, if you want your content to become available af af at a specific time, you can add a start date. Let's say I want this to become available tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the morning, maybe. And you can do it like that for each one of your of your items. Maybe you, you want to... Uh, release modules sequentially at a specific date, you can do it by choosing a start date. You can also add a due date and an end date. If you add a due date, this will be added to the course schedule and to the calendar. So let's say that this is due on the on the 30th. So I want my students to review this content by end of day on the 30th. 
You can also add release conditions. So this content will become available as soon as my students um, comply or fulfill another requirement. For example, they have to first see unit one before they see unit two, or they have to complete a quiz before they see the next content, or they have to participate in a discussion before they see the next content. So that's what release conditions are about. You can also add exemptions uh, for students, and then you can update. You can also add a description. So what is this content about? You can write a short description for your students. Um, so that is really the most important things that I want to show you in this uh, uh, for regarding uh, the availability of content. So I'm going to go back to table of contents. Now you'll see that my getting support page, it's currently hidden but I changed it to make it a manual requirement. And then it's due on October 30th and it will become available tomorrow at 8 a.m. If I go to my course schedule, now you'll notice that there is something due uh, on Monday, October 30th, which is this content page. So every time you add a due date to something, it will appear here on, in, on your course schedule. And then you can switch it to make it visible, for example, by doing this. You can also change this by clicking on the question mark. So maybe you want to uh, change uh, some of these items to manual, you can. You can also bulk edit and you can choose to either delete, hide, or change multiple items at once. And then when you're done, you can click on done editing. Okay, so. That was, um, those, those were the due dates for a specific item um, on, your, on your folder, but you can also make the folder itself or the module itself available at a specific date uh, by clicking on add dates and restrictions, add a description here. And now let's go into learning materials. So there is one main module called learning materials. And within that module, there are 15 folders or sub modules, one for each week. So here you can start organizing your content for your students. You'll notice that week one is uh, hidden currently and it has four items and all the other folders are empty. So let's go into week one. Um, so there is, it's hidden here. Again, you can make it visible by just clicking on the eye and, and clicking on that toggle. And uh, you have an option to add dates and restrictions. You can add a description. And you can change the week one title by clicking on it. And let's change it to maybe our views about educational technology. That's maybe the name of my first module. Okay, there we go. I was able to change my title um, to, of my week one. And then I have a few items here. So th this is a hidden note for to a professor. So this just indicates um, how to use certain features in the course, which I will tell you about. So let's say that I want to delete this hidden note from professor. I can click on the chevron. I can scroll to the bottom and I can delete a topic. And I have the option to remove the topic and also to permanently delete both the topic and from the content and also the associated file. So for example, if you had a PowerPoint file that was outdated, I would recommend you permanently delete it so that it doesn't create a duplication in the back folders, in the back end. You're going to delete this fold, uh, this item because you no longer need it, and then you will upload the new one. But maybe you want to delete it from this particular folder, but you want to keep that folder or that item elsewhere. So then you would only remove the topic. So removing the topic removes the visible item to your students. Sorry, let me go back to it but permanently deleting removes the item visible, but also the file associated to it. Then we have a module intro, which is a website. And this has a template that you can use uh, as, a, as a model to create your own. We will edit that in a second. We also have a simple page. This is another example of how your content may look. I'm gonna use the arrow to go to the next page. And then I have a summary page. So if you're building your content in Brightspace, you can use these templates and you can reuse them and just modify the text. Um, so those are some options. You'll see that it says web page 
And by web page, it means a file created in Brightspace. How to create a new web page? I'll show you. Here on Upload Create, we're going to click on Create a File. And this will create an empty page for you to build your content. So let's say this is a checklist for week one. So in this document, you want to tell your students um, the things that they should have done by this week. So I'm going to use Heading 1 to get started, Checklist, Week 1. And then I'm going to use uh, a bulleted list. And I'm going to say, read content from week one folder. Maybe it's watch video uh, educational technology. Maybe that's the name of the video. Uh, participate in the introductory discussion. And maybe the last one is complete the learner um, questionnaire. So these are the things that students need to do by the first week. So I was able to create this document in Brightspace. Um, and I'll show you all of these tools that are available to you. So when I save and close, it will appear uh, as a page here that I can edit. But when you click on edit, now it says edit HTML. And if I go back to my week one folder, it says web page. So that can be a little confusing. When you create an empty page, it's called create a file. When you have created it, it appears as a web page. And when you want to edit, you have to use the option edit HTML. But you also have the option to upload files from your computer. Maybe you have a document with all the content that you want your students to review, or maybe you have a, a PowerPoint presentation that you wanna share with your students. So you can add these items to your folder as well. I'm gonna to go to Upload Create. I'm gonna click on Upload File. I'm gonna to go to my computer and I'm going to upload a file from my computer. So let's choose this one, for example. So I have uploaded a file, I click on add, and now the, the file appears here and it says it's a PDF document. And the name of the title that appears here is actually the title of the file itself. You might wanna change it. So you can click on, on, on the title itself. It will open the document on your, on your, on your, on your Brightspace environment. Students don't have to leave uh, Brightspace, but you can then change the name. Maybe I'm just going to call it Pedagogy of Play, and I'm going to say in parentheses 2022. Let's say it was written in 2022. There we go. So there, there it is. I can go back to my week one folder, and then I have a PDF document here. I can also upload a uh, or share uh, a link to a, a website. So let's say that I want to share the George Brown College website. So I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to go here to upload, create, create a link. And I'm going to call this the George Brown College website. And then I'll share the URL. So maybe you're sharing a website with an article that you want your students to review, or it's a video that you want your students to watch. Um, then it's available here. So now it says link and it will take students directly to where they need to go. The same thing we can do with a YouTube video. So I'm, I'm gonna find uh, the link for a YouTube video and we'll share it over here. So I copied the link. I'm gonna click create a link. Uh, let's call it George Brown College Podcast. And I'm gonna paste the link here. And then I have created another item. It says link over here. So I'm gonna go into learner view to show you what this would look like from a student perspective. To go into learner view, you click on your name, view as learner, and then it, it takes you back to the course landing page where you see your content. Uh, this was in learning materials. I'm gonna go to week one. It says 100% because I already reviewed my content. And then I have all these items here. So if I wanna go directly to this uh, podcast uh, link, so you'll see that the icons are, are different. So these are the icons for the web pages and the file. 
and then I have an icon for a link. So if I go there, it will take me directly here where it says open in a new window. So you can click on open in new window and then it shows students the video that you share with them. But if I go to my content page and I click on, over here on the link, it will directly open the okay. link for me. So that's why I always prefer to go to the content page because it can be more direct. But here it is. All the materials that your students need are listed here. Module one, module intro, simple page. And then we have a PDF and the links are here as well. And you'll see that it says 100%. The student has completed seven out of the seven topics. I'm going to leave student view, learner view, by clicking on my name on the top left corner, sorry, top right corner, and then clicking on the X right here. I'm going to go back to my content page. So let's take a look at some of these uh, sample pages, which are templates and how you can modify them. So I'm gonna click on module intro. So it has this lovely banner, it has a title, and then it has some text. I'm gonna click on the Chevron and edit the HTML. So here it is, I have my banner which you can replace. If you want to create a new banner, you can. I have a title, which is listed as a heading one. And this is very important that we use headings when we're creating our content so that screen readers and other assistive technology can navigate the content appropriately. Then we have this note here. It was actually a, a note for faculty. Um, this is where you can have an overview of your, of your, of your module. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm going to maybe just say uh, our views about technology, about educational technology. That was the name of my week one topic. And then you can write some text. And then you can go on with a little short description, a short description uh, about your, your text. Then you can, of course, modify your learning objectives. You can add a section with your activity preview. So the things that your students are going to be doing in the module. And then there is also a recommendation here, uh, some notes about the banner. So if you want to modify the banner, then it should be 1200 pixels wide and 400 pixels high. And that way it will cover the full page. Uh, and then you go, there are some instructions there that you can delete and you can read on your own time if you have more questions about the banner. So now that you have made changes, you can save and close. And the changes have been saved. But let's say you want to reuse this for another module. Let's say I wanna to go to module number two or week number two. So week two, I'm gonna to go to upload, create, and I'm gonna create a new file. But instead of creating from scratch, I can select a document template, template, and I have a few here. I have a simple page template, I have a module intro, and I have the Meet Your Professor template. So let's say that I wanna use this one over here, module intro. It will copy the same content uh, that you saw before, but now you can modify the page. So if you're if you have a, a consistent uh, experience for every module in your course and you have the same format, then you can reuse your templates and just make the modifications in the text. And this will save you time and keep your course looking very professional and consistent. So then I can call this module intro uh, module introduction. Maybe week number two is about inclusivity and techno and educational technology. And you can go ahead and continue working on your page. Anytime, oh, I forgot the title, very important. If you create a new file, you have to add a title here as well. So let's call it, um, uh, this could be module introduction. And then I'll call it the same thing, inclusivity and educational technology. Save and close. There we go. So we have created in, on our week two folder, a new web page. And every page you create can be reused as a template. How do you do that? You go to, again, create a file, select the document template. So you have these three that have been loaded for you, but you can browse for a template. 
And any page that you have created that ends in HTML can be used as a, as a template for you. So for example, I have these one sample page with interactive elements. I can select it. I can click on add. And here I have my sample page with the interactive elements that I had created, which I will show you more about very soon. And again, this is a sample page with interactive elements. I must add a title. This is a file that I have already used, so I'm just going to say override the existing file. And here it is, my, my page with interactive elements, which I will show you more about very soon. So in summary, what, what have we done so far? We have created, uh, we have added the template with some initial modules. Uh, the learning materials modules has uh, folders for each week, week one, week two, week three, week four. There's also another module called assessments. This is where you can have a summary of the assessments in your course, but also links to the assessments in your course, such as discussions, quizzes, assignments. You can have them linked here as well. You can also have a folder with additional resources. So you can customize and create your content menu according to your needs and the characteristics of your course. Then within those folders or modules, you can add uh, you can add or upload PDF files, Word documents. Um, you can share links as well, or you can create these files that are actually called web pages in Brightspace. Now let's take a look at some of the features to create interactive and dynamic content for your students in Brightspace. I'm going to go back to creating um, another web page by clicking on, I'm going to go to week two, and then click on upload, create a file. So here I'm going to start with a, a title, Interactive Elements in Brightspace. And I'm going to start by adding a heading one. I'm going to call it Interactive Elements in Brightspace. Um, so I'd like to show you some of the features in, in this uh, toolbox uh, because they will allow you to create excellent content for your students. So you have the regular um, formatting tools such as bold, italics, underline, and also the option to change the color. This is one of my favorite uh, tools because it will give you um, a confirmation that this contrast between the background and the foreground are enough. So black and white has the most con uh, contrast, of course, and it's fully accessible and, and viewable. But if you choose to use, for example, this yellow, it will tell you that the contrast is not enough to meet accessibility requirements. So if you choose to use color on your documents or your content, then make sure that it meets accessibility requirements by taking a look at this area down here. Uh, then you have an option to, of course, uh, center, justify your text. Uh, you also have bulleted lists, numbered lists. Um, and then we have a few options here that I would like to highlight. The first one is, um, insert stuff. So by inserting stuff, you can upload a file directly to this page. So maybe your students are going through some text and you want them to review a file or a, or a document. So then you can go to your, your computer and you can choose a file. So I'm just going to use another example here. Uh, here we have it, uh, a file, and I upload it. And it tells me uh, what text do I want to show. So instead of a very long text that, that shows just the location of these files, I can use descriptive text uh, so my students know what this is about. So this is ethics of artificial intelligence in education. And by clicking on refresh the preview, I can see what that would look like. So here it is. So I have uh, my link that will take my students to this file. Uh, so this is a PDF document that summarizes some of the ethical considerations for both educators and students and learners when using artificial intelligence. Okay, so you can you know have a little summary of what the article is about. And 
So that is under insert stuff. Then there's also the H5P feature. So if you have not used H5P, H5P is a content tool uh, or interactive content creator. So there are um, options to, to have multiple choice questions, true or false questions, drag and drop exercises, and many of these exercises connect to the gradebook. So it's an opportunity for you to, to incorporate some quick check-ins or quick, quick uh, low stakes assessments for your students. So let's say that I wanna include this one about the capitals. Uh, so it shows me what it looks like. I have created this in advance. So you would need to create your uh, H5P items in advance. And we have training on H5P and we can provide support with H5P. So if you, if this is something you'd like to learn more about, then you can contact uh, the TLX or you can contact the educational technology specialists at the TLX. So this is just a simple true or false um, multiple choice question that I can insert. Um, so in the same page where I have some text for my students, then I can also have these H5P items. So while my students are reading some content or watching a video or listening to a podcast, then you can incorporate some of these interactive elements. So that is under insert stuff. You can also add a video note. So you can record yourself directly in Brightspace um, um, talking about your content or clarifying some concepts or answering questions. You can incorporate those videos here as well. Uh, you also have the option to insert links or to embed code. So for example, if you're using Padlet or another external tool and you want to bring that into Brightspace, you can do it using the enter embed code feature. Then we have insert quick links. So this is also a, a fantastic tool in Brightspace. This allows you to link to other places in your course. So not external tools, not external websites, but actually internal links. For example, maybe you want students to go after they read this content, you want them to go to a discussion. So you can click on discussions and you can select the discussion that you have created in advance. And then um, you select it and you create a link to that discussion here. So another example, if you're creating a checklist of the things that your students need to do this week, then you can link directly to those items using the insert quick link option. There's even a checklist option. So you can also create a checklist in Brightspace. I'm going to actually select these two and make them a bulleted list. There we go. And then I have my H5P item just below, which this one, I don't want it to be uh, a bulleted list. So I'm just going to remove it. There we go. So I have these two items in a bulleted list and I have my H5P item. So we reviewed insert stuff. We reviewed insert quick link. You can also add images. So let's say you want to have an image here. You can click over here, go to your computer and upload an image from your computer. I'll find an example. So here I have an image that I have uploaded and it will prompt you for alternative text, which is a very important uh, for users of assistive technology. So if a user cannot see an image, the, the screen reader or the assistive technology will tell what the image is about, especially if the image has meaning and is important for the overall understanding of the content, you should add uh, alternative text. So this is a cartoon of a man wearing a virtual reality headset. If, if the image is decorated, then you can mark it as decorative here. So here it is, my image. It's quite big, but I can select it and I can make it smaller. So there we go. I can also modify, edit the image, make it smaller, and you can change the location of the image on your page as well. And then we have options for mathematical and graphical equations over here. We have options to insert tables and then the plus sign, the creator plus options. Here you can add a divider if you want to divide your page. So I'll show you what that would look like. Let's say, oh, this came on the wrong place. So I'm gonna actually cut it and put it where it should go. Right here. Now let's go back to the bottom and let's add a divider. It's a faint line that divides your content. You have emojis, you have symbols, you have layouts. The layouts uh, give you the opportunity to organize your content in two panels, two thirds, so one panel bigger than the other, 
one smaller panel and then one big, or then three equally sized panels. Then we have the option to insert a practice exercise. So again, these are also opportunities for your students to interact with the content. So while they're, after they're watching a video or maybe after they're reading some content, you can add drop down exercises, fill in the blanks, multi-select, and um, true or false sorting. So a lot of options to go through and I invite you to take a look at them. I'll show you an example with a fill in the blank, for example. So let's call this um, um, a fill in the blank about um, the college. So George Brown College. And then uh, you can have some instructions. So please or fill in the blank with the appropriate response. And then it tells you to add the root question and then to create a blank, you're gonna be using brackets, double brackets. So let's say the question is George Brown College was founded in the year and then double brackets. Option one, no space, and then I close the brackets again. And you can add as many blank as you, as you need. Um, and then I'm actually okay. So then I update the blank. And now you add the correct answer right here. Okay, so the answer is 1967. So you can choose to make it case sensitive. You can also use a regular expression. Um, and then you can add alternative answers if, if you're accepting different types of answers. And then how will you, how will this practice be scored? All or nothing, correct inputs, right minus wrong inputs. I'm going to do correct inputs. And maybe I have another, um, um, another blank. So I'm going to do it, uh, it currently has three campuses. And then I'm going to do my, my brackets again. Option two, and then option three, I'll do the same thing for option, you know. So I'm gonna copy and do option three, and then and option four. So I'm just gonna then change the numbers here. So option three, option four, I'm gonna update the blanks, and then I have to add the answer. So what's the correct for option one? It could be St. James, but I also have alternative answers, right? Because they, they, the students might answer Casaloma or they might answer Waterfront. And then you would do the same thing for the other questions, right? So students just say Casaloma, the same thing, St. James, and then Waterfront. And the same for option four. So this is just an example. And it can be just one quick fill in the blank. I decided to add three, right? So, but it can be simple. Okay, so here it is. Uh, I can check my answers over here. And then I can insert. So I, your practice has been saved. I can close this dialogue here. And now my practice is here. So that is a practice, but there's also elements such as accordions, taps, clicks and reveal, click and reveal. So a lot of these tools allow you to create and present your content in a beautiful, engaging way. If you're using images, for example, you might want to have some flip cards that image the, 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 the image flips and it has more information. Or maybe you have a collection of images you want to show your students, you can do a carousel. Or if you have a lot of content, a lot of definitions, you might want to use an accordion, and it expands as you as you as students click on each one of the content. So I'm going to save and close to show you what this would look like from a student perspective. I'm going to make this bigger. Uh, so actually, I cannot make it bigger because I'm only sharing the screen. So I have a title, I have an image, I have some links, I have my H5P activity. So what's the capital of Canada? I can submit my answer and it will tell me how much I got right away. Then I have my little fill in the blank exercise. So it was founded in 1967 and it has three campuses. I'm gonna say Waterfront, St. James, and then Casa Loma. And I can check my answers. And 
it tells me how much, how many points I got. I can try again if I, let's say I made a mistake or even, um, that's James. I can check my answers and it will tell me score three out of four. So these are quick ways to add some interactivity to your content, to give students an opportunity to check their understanding and help them uh, review uh, what they're learning. So these are some ways you can create interactive content for your students. You can also move folders around. You might realize that you want things in a different order. You can use this little icon over here to the left of the title and you can move things. You can also put a folder within a folder. So maybe let's say that you want this additional resources folder within the essential information. You can drag and drop it inside. And now essential information has the additional resources folder at the top, which you can also move to the bottom perhaps. So it's very simple to move things around. So if you made a mistake or things are not in, in the order that you want them to appear, then you can just drag and drop, or you can also put folders within folders. If you made it, if you change your mind and you actually don't want this in this folder, you want it back in the main menu, then you can drag and drop it again. And it's again, a level one module. So I hope this was a, a helpful introduction to creating content in Brightspace. There are a lot of great tools to explore. Uh, my 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 recommendation for you or or my the next step for you would be to explore all of these tools use your sandbox to give it a try try the templates try the features and explore some of these options and maybe start start small choose one little thing that you'd like to try and integrate it incorporate it into your course and I hope you have fun at creating content in Brightspace. And please connect with the Teaching and Learning Exchange if you'd like more support or you have questions. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.